Welcome to Renovating a Stuart 5A Twin Steam Engine. This is part 8, Engine Bearers, Mounting Base and the Water Feed Pumps. The first thing to look at are the engine bearers. I wondered how to put this together. It was on a rough box to start with, but I thought, no, I'll put it on a pair of solid oak engine bearers. And that was a quick shot of me diving into the film to have another sniff at this solid oak. It's beautiful stuff. It's extremely hard. It really is hard. I wouldn't like to hit anybody with it. Not that I go about hitting people with pieces of wood. But if I was going to hit someone with a piece of wood, this would be my first choice. I got these pieces of oak cut to size by a very good local woodyard called Howarth Timber, for anyone who was interested. Both of these pieces of oak were put through the power planer together, so dimensionally they are exactly the same size. All I need to do with them, apart from drill some holes in them, is make some cutouts at each end. The current clip is showing me doing the marking out and I'm using a micrometer to get the approximation of the curve that I need. And then what I'm going to do, using my jigsaw, is cut these out. So it's outside and using a jigsaw I am removing these little pieces. And it is really difficult. It's not so difficult cutting, it's rotating the jigsaw to get the curve. I'm only showing cutting one of the curved pieces. The others were equally difficult. And here's the finished thing, looking a bit rough round the edges, but all will be revealed shortly. Over now to the belt sander, and the first thing I did was to fit a brand new belt to it, and I'm just shaping the finished profiles on the end of the pieces of oak. I'm also sanding the sides and the top and bottom. Even though they went through a planer, there were still one or two undulations. But as the man down at Howarth Timber did a very good job in planing this wood, it only needed a light sanding to make them perfect. If you don't have any of these, you should get some. They're called transfer punches in different sizes. This was a very inexpensive Chinese set that I got off eBay, I believe, and they really are good. They're only a set of centre punches, really, but they have all different sizes to fit in the holes that you need them to go in, like this one. So this allows me to accurately transfer the position of the hole in the Stuart casting to the bearer. Doing it any other way would be difficult. If I used an electric drill, I couldn't get in there. I suppose I could put a twist drill in there and gently turn it by hand, but I wouldn't get a very definite pilot. This one puts a nice firm centre punch hole in the wood, or metal for that matter, but in this case, I'm using this oak. So I removed the engine, and then I removed the bearers, took them to the drilling machine, drilled the holes in them, and brought them back and the mounting bolts that I bought went straight into the holes right to the bottom of the bearer. So once I knew everything was OK, it was just a case of remove the bolts and use the punch again, all the way down this time onto the baseboard. Once this had been done, I took the bearers outside, and you can clearly see the holes in them now, and I sprayed them with some red primer. Then I went back into the workshop whilst the red primer was drying to have a look at the water pumps. I've already tested these out with water and they work very well, they pump very well indeed. I need to know what the threads are, so the first port of call is a micrometer and this one is 7 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. I'd love to say it's because I've just read it off the micrometer, but really I don't do that if I can help it. As long as a 7 sixteenths of an inch drill fits nicely through the gap, then it's a 7 sixteenths of an inch diameter thread. It's just one of these things like my old adjustable spanner, it just saves time. I'm now trying to work out what the other thread is. It's 3 eighths of an inch, but is it 26 threads per inch, 32 threads per inch, 40 threads per inch, or 28 threads per inch BSP? As it turns out, I know exactly what this thread is. I can tell by screwing this into it. It is not 32 threads per inch, it is 26 threads per inch. It's a model engineer thread. And also, the other thread is 26 threads per inch, according to this 26 threads per inch tap that I'm holding up against the thread. Belt and braces approach. I'm also running a 26 threads per inch die down the thread as well. And this is a good thing because running the die down the thread cleans it up a little bit too. 26 threads per inch on both threads, one is 7 sixteenths and one is 3 eighths. So after I put some Loctite 542 on the joint, I can screw on this right angle union. The reason for fitting these right angle adapters is so the water inlet feed can be taken from, for instance, the front of the boat where the water tank would be. This engine's not actually going in a boat, but that's not the point. You always have to know where your water supply is. 
My first wife was not a well woman. Every morning when I used to throw her down the well to get the water, she used to complain bitterly. If only I'd have had these two pumps on a steam engine like this. That's about it for the pair of pumps. There'll be a little bit more when I fit the pumps to the engine, and when I move this finally into shot, yes, there it is, my trusty adjustable spanner allows me to rotate this angle union to the right orientation. I made a couple of these adapters too. These are 3 8 by 32 to 3 8 by 26 threads per inch. The 26 threads per inch part goes into the pump, and the 32 threads per inch part is to take a commercial union. A 3 8 by 32 commercial union will accept a quarter inch pipe in exactly the same way as a 7 16 of an inch right angle adapter will also accept a quarter inch pipe. And in this clip I'm showing how I put the whole thing together. A 3 8 by 32 union nut with a cone pipe nipple to take the quarter inch pipe. This is very much a model engineering standard. And this has nothing to do with model engineering really. I am painting the bearers. I've spaced them out so I can get in between them with the can. And while the paint on the bearers is drying, it's time to process the baseboard. If you remember, I used transfer punches to transfer the holes, and I've drilled the holes, and look how well they fit. These are not oversized holes either, they're just big enough, so I'm quite happy with that fit. However, I am going to drill the holes slightly oversized just to allow a little bit of movement. I've also recessed the underside so the heads are not sticking out from the baseboard. And also this gives me the correct length that I need to mount the engine. All that remains to be done now for the moment is to bolt the engine to the bearers. And this is not as easy as it looks. This thing is really heavy. That baseboard is surprisingly weighty. So now I have to lift at one end and put a piece of wood underneath so I can get my hand in to pop the bolts up through the holes. You'll see it arrive in a second now. I'm really pleased with the way things are fitting together on this engine. I've had no real line-up problem at all. I'm just waiting till I get my hand underneath to press the bolt and wait for it. Yes, there it comes. Straight up through the hole, put the washer on, put the nut on and start tightening. It's quite important not to tighten the nut on the first bolt or any of the other bolts for that matter. Leave them all slack until you've got them all in place and then go around and tighten a lot of them in one go. That way you won't damage or crack anything. It's time to fit the water pumps back in position. These are very simply bolted to the engine bed plate. What I do notice about this one, this 5A that you're looking at, and the other 5A at the other side, because there are two of them, it's shaped to take a water pump. Normal 5As have got nice rounded corners, but this 5A on one of the corners, it's almost square. I've never seen that before. And I've worked on quite a few 5As, but not one like this. I don't think this engine is quite as aesthetically pleasing as a Swan or Signet, which have a shared base plate. I do like the clever chain coupler, and it's a made in England Reynolds product. And if anybody knows how to make chains, it must be Reynolds, they've been making them for years. Because the engine does not share a very rigid common bed plate, Having this chain coupler with a little bit of play between the two engines is a very good thing, in case there's any misalignment. As far as I'm concerned, there's not much in the way of misalignment, and the fact that it's sat on these solid oak bearers, I don't really think it's going to go anywhere. Look, it even runs without a flywheel, and it runs very sweetly. And while you're all watching in amazement at the engine, there's some painting. I'm finishing off the flywheel. I've done the other side. I'm just putting some paint on the back side of the flywheel, pardon the expression. As soon as the paint's dry on this flywheel, it can go back on the engine. Before reassembling the pumps, I put some steam oil into the cylinder part of the pump, just to seal it. And now by putting my finger over the inlet or the outlet, I can feel a pulse. So that means the pumps are going to be working fine on water. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.